Don't look like a crisp. It just looks like peach. We're getting there. Really? We're getting there. What's this shirt say? Dear Jesus, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. <laughs> it's me. Yeah, I agree with that shirt. Yeah. Charlie, did you take care of everybody while I was gone? I left you in charge. Everything get taken care of? Oh, oh, there is. That is a huge sandbag. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, yo, right I'm trying. Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and uh, welcome back to a sweltering, uh, dry, hot southern Oklahoma. <laughs> I don't know what it's like where you guys are, but we have hit, officially hit, the dog days of summer here. Triple digit temperatures and no rain for weeks. <laughs> Not my favorite time of year. I know my wife gets out here and says, oh, it's hot. I love it. I love the heat. She's crazy. That's the only way I know to put it. She's crazy. I love her. <laughs> I don't like the time of year where I have to go through about three sh three t-shirts a day. <laughs> Just, uh. So we spend most of our uh, dog days of summer in the creek or now with a new boat hooked up, you know, ready to go at the lake because, well, it's hot. And speaking of the lake, we actually just got home. We had a little family adventure to uh, southeast Oklahoma. Emily went on a, a float trip with our church, our church youth group. The teens went to uh, Broken Bow to float the river. And there's a little community outside of Broken Bow, Oklahoma called Hocha Town. And it's turned into like this little luxury cabin community on the lake and there's just airbnb rental cabins everywhere hundreds of them so they were, the church group was going down for a couple days to float the river and uh dj was going to float the river with emily so houston and i well we just went ahead all of us went ahead and rented a cabin half a mile from the one that the church had rented and uh took the boat so houston and i could fish in the mornings and the evenings because there's nothing fun about being on the lake at two o'clock in the afternoon this time of year when it's 105 degrees so Houston and I would get up at, you know, 5.30 and hit the lake for a few hours and then go out for a couple hours in the evening. And uh, let me tell you, Broken Bow is a beautiful lake. But in uh, early July, the fishing, uh, we caught some fish. Let's say that. We didn't catch very many bass. We were mostly bass fishing. And uh, it was tough. It was beautiful, clear water, but it was tough. We had a great time. But to say... Uh, Houston outfish me would be an understatement. I could hardly catch a fish to save my life. But the church did their thing, the teen group did their thing, and then we stayed an extra day or two and did a little swimming, did a little tubing, spent some time out on the lake, and uh, the kids found some cliffs to jump off of. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Houston, why'd you scream like a girl? <laughs> oh, that was your sister. Never mind. Kelsey, why didn't you jump? It's way higher than it seems. <laughs> <laughs> We had a great time, and I do, I do believe Houston and I will be spending more time at Broken Bow Lake probably next spring when, when the bass fishing's a little better and it's a little cooler. Maybe in the fall. I don't know. Gorgeous lake. Um, I hadn't been on it in probably 25 years. I don't even remember, honestly, the last time I was on that lake. I was a little kid, probably. But gorgeous lake. If you're in southeast Oklahoma or looking for a place to go, check out Hocha Town and look at the cabins in Broken Bow Lake and Beaver's Bend State Park. Beautiful place. Although we didn't shoot much video, we had a great time. But back home, it's time to get back to work. Need to get some things done. So I think I'm going to take the, uh, the skid steer and hook onto my swing boom cutter and do a little bit of mowing, do a little bit of trimming. Dusty had that thing borrowed for a few months and it's back home now and I need to get some Houston wants me to clean up around the pond. I haven't weed eated and mowed around the pond, and he's been angry at me because it's hard to fish when the grass is waist high around the pond. So I may go do that. I don't know. Try to do something to stay out of the heat as best I can, at least for a little while.
this project isn't starting off great. Come down and hooked up to the swing boom cutter and uh, the hoses were just kind of flipped over laying there. Didn't think a whole lot about it. And when you, uh, when you hook onto this thing, get in there, you have to kind of pop it back to you a little bit to get it fully seated in there. Well, I completely smashed about a $40 hydraulic fitting. It kind of got laid in right there. Completely just smashed it. <laughs> That's the way to start off a project. But luckily, I think I have what I need. I think, I think I have the right size hydraulic fitting. If not, I guess I'll be doing something else. Okay, never mind. Pretend I said anything at all. I don't have the right coupling, the right fitting here. That was not the right size. That was a three quarter and eight a half inch. That was one I took off of these implements when I first got it because they didn't match up to what was on the New Holland skid steer. But I'll pick one up in a few days when I make it, <laughs> make it to a uh, hydraulic fitting store. However, in other news, I don't guess I was meant to uh, do any work on the skid steer today anyways because when i got in it and hooked this all up the air conditioner was blowing hot air and i thought ah it'll kick in in a minute no no actually it didn't kick in and it's just blowing hot air i don't know if you've ever tried to work in a cabbed machine with no air conditioner when it's 100 degrees that's just not on my list of to-do items today i don't think because it's like a sauna trying to work in there without any airflow I mean, there is airflow. It blows hot air. I don't know. Listen, um, so this is the second time I've had AC problems with this new Holland. The first time, I just kind of chalked it up to uh, it was shipped from the from the factory without any Freon in the cooling system. Uh, when I first bought it, it was November. Picked it up, brought it home, and never tried the air conditioner until the next spring. So I took it to the dealership. Oh, yeah, no big deal. They put some Freon in it. And it's worked ever since. This thing is about a year and a half old. Well, it'll be two years in, in November. It's got 180-ish hours on it. And now the AC is not working again. Um, about 30 hours ago, I had to replace one of these uh, idler rollers down here. The bearing went out and it. Luckily, that was under warranty. I don't know. I, I love this New Holland skid steer track loader. But it's had its issues. Um, it's been a great machine, but man, if the air conditioner doesn't work, I'm, I know I'm a little spoiled, I guess. But uh, I guess I'm going to have to load it up and drive it an hour and a half back over to the dealership and actually let them go through it and see if they can figure out why it's leaking Freon. Because you pay a lot of money for a machine like that and uh, you expect it to work the way it's supposed to. So I guess I'll, uh, I'll go park this thing for the day and... Uh, Maybe tomorrow, pick up, maybe tomorrow, then, well, can't tomorrow. Tomorrow's actually the 4th of July, Happy Independence Day. Uh, in a couple of days, go pick up a hydraulic fitting for that and get it fixed. And then, I don't know, in the next week or so, get this thing loaded up and take it over to the dealership because it's not going to be of any use to me this summer <laughs> without an air conditioner because it's hot. And it only takes a few minutes for me to sweat through a shirt out here. <laughs> I'll go find something else to do, I guess. What's going on in here? Hope you guys are having better luck than me today. <clears throat> I'm, my uh, work projects are failing. Well, shows me trying what to are eat you, the peaches. What are you working on here? Oh. Cutting up some fresh peaches, huh? Yeah, we're peeling peaches. Where, um, where'd you get all those peaches at? On my peach tree at the building. Oh, and I think we need to give it a name. I mean, I've thought that for a while. The peach tree? No. Oh. Building. Well, I thought we were talking about peaches. Well, we were, <laughs> but it just made me think about it because I said merch building. Yeah, you know, like the bunker for bunker branding and Ponderosa. Oh yeah, they got a name for theirs too. Yeah. Yeah, we just call it the merch building. Yeah, but uh, let's just call it Buckhorn. <laughs> Buckhorn. The Buckhorn area, Buckhorn Creek. We just call it Buckhorn. It's easy enough. But this is Buckhorn. Or well, Creek. Buckhorn there too. Oh my gosh, you're so confusing. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, why is there a seed in there? I didn't put that there. Yes, you did. No, oh, maybe I did. <laughs> so, hang on, hang on, dogs. Hang on, be quiet. So what are y'all making here? Oh, uh, 
Can we just make this Okay, good back to before the dog started going crazy. So what are you making? What do you got going on here? Look, you two are just eating peaches. That's all you're doing. I see you. Both of you. We're going to make a peach crisp. Peach crisp, huh? Eventually. How much? How many peaches do you need? So it said eight cups. Oh. All right, well, let me know when it's done. Okay. Don't look like a crisp, it just looks like peach. We're getting there. Uh, We're getting there. What's this shirt say? Dear Jesus, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. <laughs> it's me. Yeah, I agree with that shirt. Yeah. It's because I'm a Swifty. That's where that comes from. I don't know if you're supposed to say that out loud. Sure. You're 40. You're over 40. I don't think you're supposed to say that out loud. I don't care. I love her. Well, <laughs> I guess since... uh. Work wasn't going to go my way today. I think Houston and I are going to run over to the lake for a couple hours this evening before dark. But I uh, need to check on all the animals. We've been gone for, let's see, we left on Sunday afternoon, made it back home Wednesday morning. But Weston was able to uh, stay here. He spent the night. He was working during the day, obviously, but he was here in the evenings. Take care of all the animals, feed everybody. But uh, a lot of you guys... Say, how come we don't ever get to see videos of the animals, you know, this time of year? And it's just because it's just hot and they just don't do a whole lot. Like, they're just kind of chilling. Like, I, I'll go back and show you the goats in a minute. They're just chilling, not doing much. Now, these girls are antsy. These girls are always antsy. Charlie, did you take care of everybody while I was gone? I left you in charge. Everything get taken care of? Oh, oh. I forgot. I haven't told everybody. Forgot about this. Okay. Before we feed and before we change everybody's water out and give them fresh, clean water, um, we redid some fence. This has been a delayed project <laughs> for too long. Um, so the guys that came in and redid all the fence after the flood for me, there's still a pile of old fence and stuff here. Um, I hired them. I said, hey, while you're here, why don't we go ahead and redo this stretch of fence because I never finished that after we built the barn. The little, DJ's little donkey barn there. So, I had them, I know it looks a little wonky because the fence is not up against the barn. We had to put two little uh, short pieces in here. And that's basically because when this was built, it didn't get pushed back in line with the fence so it didn't make any sense to run our fence at an angle when it's a straight fence you don't necessarily want it running crooked so it'll work but we now have a gate on the back side of the little donkey barn so when dj or i are feeding we can come out of the barn walk straight through i'm not a big fan of what they did for a latch i didn't have a latch here and i wasn't here when they hung the gate but it'll work for now but you can walk straight into the little donkey barn from the main goat pen typically and feed so uh sneak attack <laughs> snuck around you didn't i charlie you look a little uh irritable today are you grouchy hmm you are uh covered in mud i know you've been laying in pepper's mud hole haven't you that's what you've been doing <laughs> your feet your legs are filthy your feathers are filthy you've been laying in pepper's mud hole haven't you weston sent me a video while he was here the other day how the water hose just hosing <laughs> hosing charlie down and he was enjoying it because uh it was 100 degrees huh what is it phoebe hmm? what's the matter are you hot i know it's warm out here isn't it Hey, Pepper. <laughs> Can I hose you down and cool you off a little bit? I know it's hot out here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your mud hole's looking a little uh, dry. Copper and Isaac aren't doing much in this heat either. Copper's hanging out over here under some old hay in that old hay feeder. Isaac, you doing anything? 
Doesn't look like it, and I don't blame you. Just chilling. Well, I mean, chilling's probably not the right word, is it, buddy? A lot of folks said they hadn't seen Isaac in forever. The old man is still here. Still hanging in there with us. Doesn't get around very well these days, but... <laughs> he's, uh... He's still with us. I think he's the goat that's going to live forever. Maybe the oldest goat I've ever owned. Pretty close to it, anyways. <laughs> he does look majestic, but... He gets around about like a 90-year-old man. Don't you, buddy? And have I mentioned... It's hot. It's really hot. I miss those 75 degree spring days for sure. Hey Pepper. I got your feed just the way you like it. In a fresh bowl of water. That's the way you like your feed this time of year, huh? Are you done, Brandon? That really hurts my ears when you do that. Yes. Hang on, I got a little feed for you. I got a little feed for you. There you go. No more yelling at me, okay, Brandon? What's the matter, the girls won't let you eat with them? Hmm? Are you just protecting? Are you protecting your girls? Hmm. What's up, buddy? You been doing your job? Hmm. Are we gonna Are we gonna have some little baby Phoebe Fallon and Ferris next year? <laughs> Not anytime soon, huh, Phoebe? Even the duck says it's hot. When the ducks are panting like a dog, it's hot outside. Sorry, I didn't mean to discriminate. It's not just the ducks panting. The turkeys are panting too. Our uh, two lone survivors from the baby turkeys that hatched out still have their stepmom following them around. <laughs> Goose, is, uh, Goose is a good protector of the babies for sure. Huh. I hear you. This guy... Every time I turn around, if you can't find Houston, just go look in the boat. That's where he's going to be. <laughs> hey, I like fishing, okay? I can tell. I can tell. You got all of our rods organized about here. Switching up what you're going to fish with this evening? Yeah. Every time I can't find him, just go look in the boat. <laughs> it's usually in the shop, and he's usually sitting in the boat in the shop, organizing tackle or working on rods. Hey, if it involves with fishing gear, I'll do it. So I told everybody you outfished me at Broken Bow. I did do that. It was embarrassing. Like, it wasn't even close. I barely, I think I caught, what, two fish? You caught two I got, fish. I got two fish in the boat and lost one. Yeah. I told them nobody's going to believe me. I told them I lost a three-pounder right at the boat. No, you definitely did. Yeah. I was telling you that, though. I had the biggest fish of the trip. Lost him about right there. Next to the boat. Yep. Doesn't count. Well, you want to go fishing this evening? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's we'll see if we can talk mom into going to lake with us. Yeah. So every time I walk down here to the barn, I keep thinking, oh, man, what's that smell? It's because I forget. <laughs> I started three buckets of uh, soaked corn, so I'm making some soured corn to use to uh, bait out some catfish holes at the lake. And this stuff has been soaking, sitting in the sun for probably close to a week. I think we'll take a bucket over today and find us a good spot to dump it out and then about twice a week go refresh it and then see if we can catch some catfish over a baited hole. But uh, <clears throat> it's getting ripe. Isn't it there, duck? <laughs> Still panting, I see. Standing on a hot metal pipe is probably pretty warm. And I can't remember if I told you guys or not, but uh, 
It's hot. <laughs> it is hot. Just in case I forgot to tell you. Hey, y'all. How's the goats? Everybody good? Goats are good? I got you a little bucket of feed. I'll feed you. Skip. <laughs> You're covered in stick tights. Did you know that? Your your whole body is covered in stick tights. There's baby Baker and Bree. You guys have uh, found you a place to dust bay that looks like. <laughs> you got all that pasture out there and then you stomp down all the grass and make you a place to roll in the dust right here next to the fence, huh? Ain't that right, Bear? You been protecting everybody while I was gone? Hmm? Did you keep Weston in line? Yeah, good boy. I appreciate it. You're a good boy. Is that good stuff? There's Baker. What are you doing, pretty little girl? Hmm? Huh? Bear. Hang on, buddy. Hang on. I want to love on Baker, too. Come here, Baker. <laughs> Why are you nudging your mom like that? Hmm? I saw you nudging on her. She not letting you nurse as much right now? No. All right. I won't disturb your supper. What about you, Bree? You enjoying a little snack? Hmm? All right, y'all. There's your animal update. I'm sorry you guys don't get to see a lot of... Uh, animal content this time of year but when it's just this brutally hot honestly the animals just kind of lay around and survive it like the rest of us and uh i think we're well over a month now without any rain which is crazy to think after all the flooding we had but look we're already getting cracks in our backyard in the ground i mean cracks big enough i can stick my finger down in it's crazy went from rain every two or three days I told you, and I told you, I called it. I said, when it quits raining, it'll stop, and we won't have any more rain for the rest of the summer. And we're there now. It's uh, miserably hot and dry, so I'm going to go in and cool off and take my kid to the lake and probably get out fished again, which I'm okay with because it makes him happy, and hopefully we can get Mom to go with us this time. And uh, I don't know. She may want to stay at home and cool off, <laughs> stay cool for the evening. So I don't know. We'll see. Hey, 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 hey. Don't hey me. You haven't had supper yet, ma'am. Doesn't apply to me. Oh. How is it? Mm. It needs some vanilla ice cream. We do. Vanilla ice cream on top of a peach crisp mm. made with fresh, um, I would say homegrown peaches, but we don't live there. We don't take Fre them. Fresh merch building grown peaches. <laughs> Made with, mm. enriched with alpaca manure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dad. I, I mean, not on the fruit. It's semi healthy. I mean, on the ground. I also use protein oats. Protein oats. <laughs> well, Houston and I made it over to the lake. We've been here for probably, I don't know, an hour or so. I haven't caught any bass, but we did find some sand bass. We both caught one apiece. This guy's still throwing a buzz bait. I told him. Buzzbait's probably not going to be the ticket for sand bass. And, I want to uh, catch a, a largemouth bass. I know. I know. I'm uh, I'm the kind of guy, I come over here, I catch fish. Houston's targeting. He wants a big bass. That's all he wants is a big bass. So, I'm going to try to catch some sand bass while Houston goes after a big black bass. Or smallmouth. Black bass. Well, that's what a largemouth called black bass. Oh. Oh, it's sand bass. Oh, I got a sand bass. Oh, it's yeah. a big one. It sure is. That is a huge sand bass. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Get the hey, out there. I'm trying. That happened really fast. <laughs> well, they were schooling for just a second, and then they went back down, didn't they? Yeah. There's a good release on it. <laughs> You're a special I don't see one. you release many of those. No, no. This, this one right here is very lucky. <laughs> it's a lucky feller.
stinker, but it's still a fish. Hey. Oh, I was getting hit too. Sorry. Let's <laughs> see if I can put this back in here. I think I already lost mine, but he about yanked my rod out of my hand. I tried to set the hook. Well, That's a pretty. ain't no tournament winner, but uh, you got a small mouth. I don't know what our deal is with dinks lately. Oh. We're like the dink fishermen. Let's let him go. It's a pretty one. Just toss him back. Go get a bigger one. Get the big brother. Or his dad. Or a or a Well, you we said we were gonna come over here to your favorite spot where you knew you'd catch at least one fish. And, and you did on the first cast, I think. Second. Second. waiting on this emily brought home some ice cream i stayed out of that that peach crisp earlier i, I gave it a taste and that was about it but i uh hmm, we're gonna get more than a taste this time aren't we houston mm -hmm. i can't believe you let me out fish you again today i was not fishing very good i think i got lucky i was so how many fish did you catch two got a sand bass and a small mouth and how many fish did i catch one Mm-hmm. You outfished me again. Mm-hmm. The whole trip at Broken Bow, you outfished me. I did. And today. This is getting out of control. <laughs> don't don't be asking for the recipe because I don't have the recipe and I just think my my wife and my son pulled this off of Pinterest earlier today would be my guess, but it's a home age Home, homemade, homegrown peach crisp. I better quit shoveling, huh? We're gonna warm that up just a smidge so that our ice cream will melt. I mean, who doesn't need a 10 o'clock snack that looks like that? <clears throat> looks like I'm not the only one having a late night snack. <laughs> you two over here just crunching away. We may not be having a fish fry with all the fish we caught today, but I still feel like a winner. Mm. In the loser's bracket. Houston said I was the winner in the loser's bracket. But <laughs> this right here, mm, this right here is good stuff. Makes me feel like a winner. Mm. Thank you for peeling all those peaches. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all, <laughs> just another boring day in the life of Daniel, I guess. I, I don't know. No, and I've said this multiple times. I, I try to, I try to produce content for you guys that's A, interesting, or entertaining at least, or useful. <laughs> Sometimes days are just boring. Today was not a big exciting day, but getting to spend time on the water fishing with Houston means a lot to me and it means a lot to him i think and uh we have we've put a lot of time in that boat <laughs> in the last month already love it we love the boat we love fishing uh we just are not the best lake fishermen yet <laughs> there is a uh, a curse that we have yet to break we're really good at creek fishing we got the creek fishing stuff down and when we go to the lake, we catch fish that look like we're creek fishing. Like, you know, bass this big. And like tonight, Houston caught a smallmouth that was maybe eight inches long, you know, like a creek fish. We did catch a couple sand bass. I didn't get mine on video, but um, 
I mean, we could go out there and work and try to figure out how to catch a sand bass, work, try to figure out how to catch crappie and bass. Um, the bass fishing is where Houston's heart is right now. I'm trying to learn the crappie, so every time I see a little brush pile, I throw my bass fishing stuff down and try to catch a crappie or two. But that gets really slow when he's trying to bass fish. The crappie is totally different. So I'm going to have to do a better job of just crappie fishing or just bass fishing. I'm not trying to do both at the same time. But either way, we're having a good time. And uh, I don't know. We're going to come up with some other plans. Summertime bass fishing is tough. There's just no doubt about it. It's just tough. And we kind of bought a bass boat after the best time of year for bass fishing. If we would have had this thing where we could have been on the water in like April when, when the bass were spawning and stuff uh, and they're all up shallow, it would be great. But either way, we're having a blast, having a, having a great time. Couldn't talk mom into going with us today because she said it was just too hot. And she's not wrong. It was 99 degrees when we got to the lake, which is not as bad on the water. And fishing at sunset's just beautiful. It's, it's gorgeous out there, but you know, she's not a big time bass fisherman. And that's okay. We'll get her out there some though. But anyways, hopefully we can find some bigger, more fun, adventurous things over the next few days to get into. Sorry if this was a boring video. Sometimes it's just a day in our life and that's that's what today was. I couldn't get right this morning, or that early afternoon, trying to work, so we just went fishing. And then we didn't catch very many fish, but that's okay. So anyways, guys, remember, do something today to make somebody smile because you never know, it just might change the world. Guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day, and as always, we'll see you on the next video.